across the city and South Cambridgeshire. Cambridge 105 Radio. That is a reach, and that was a request of my next guests, Helen Meissner and John Froggett. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Uh, good morning, and uh, thank you for that request. And congratulations thank as you well very much. are in order thank because you, uh, you came in when you were Helen Meissner and you were Joe Rose and <laughs> yeah, you sang yeah. for us. I get confused. Yes, <laughs> this is your alter ego. <laughs> One of them yeah. is your alter ego. But since then, uh, you have uh, got engaged. Yeah, yeah, love has blossomed. Yes, and so you're getting married next week. And here we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't like long engagements because I'm getting old now. So um, I fear I need to get a carer sorted out before I get much older. <laughs> so, How uh, romantic! Yeah, well, I, I know. I always look on the right side of things. So um, yeah, no, it's, it's very exciting. Excellent. Very happy. Well, congratulations. Thank you very so much. This time next week. Uh, yeah. We'll be there. You'll be husband and wife. Mm, pretty much. And you're here to talk about kind of alternative approaches to business, aren't you? Ways yes. of managing that work-life balance. And yes. we're starting today, uh, this is going to be a regular feature, the first Friday of every month. And we're starting today with, with meditation. This is something mm -hmm. you use, John, then, is it? Yes. It, I, I came to meditation about nine, ten years ago. Um, my Having been self-employed for practically 20-odd years now, I was a very angry self-employed person because I started the business effectively, the accountancy business, with one client. And um, in building that up, um, it was very stressful. And I didn't realise quite how stressful. And until I could walk in the office and everybody would be quiet and there'd be this dark cloud over the office and it was dreadful. And um, that was you? That was me. I was, I was, I was the, uh, yeah, I, 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 I had this dark cloud I brought out with me. Everyone, I was angry with everybody. Um, if he was driving in front of me, uh, you were my worst enemy. The life was just stressful. And I really didn't notice it that much until it was pointed out to me by um, the um, ex-Mrs. Froggy, ex-Mrs. Froggy, <laughs> who still works with me now, and we're very happy, um, and my daughter, who uh, used to work for me. And I think I probably put her off accountancy forever because I was such a miserable person. So I decided I needed to do something about this. And my wife uh, then dabbled with um, meditation, uh, and I thought, well, yeah, I'm going to give this a go. So I went out and bought loads and loads of books. I spent a fortune on how to meditate in nine weeks and how to do this and how to do that. Didn't enjoy any of them. And uh, I found it really difficult. Um, we created this space in the house where we'd go to meditate. And I just, you know, what was I doing? So I was in Cambridge, funny enough. And there was a, a place in King's, uh, Long King's Parade called the Brahma Kumaris. And the Brahma Kumaris offered free meditation classes. So I thought, well, that's good, free. Um, so I went along and I kind of got into the spirit of that through them. Um, and I was going back there for a few years. I never quite got into their overall philosophy of life, but I kind of like the meditation side of things. And from that, I, I carried on. And my life changed insofar as um, I wasn't angry anymore. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, I, I don't have this perfect life now. I mean, things still annoy me, but I don't think I get anywhere near as angry as I used to. In fact, interesting enough, my son who works with me in the practice said something to me uh, a few months ago. He said I, I was, he brought a job in and it was wrong and he was expecting me to go nuts over it. And I thought, well, you know what? It's wrong. What can I do? I can't change it. Let's just alter it and do what we've got to do. So it's brought me into a more... Um, I think I, I think also it makes you enjoy life better because you're not stressed. I have no problem sleeping. I have uh, I'm pretty chilled. Um, and how has it done all that, John? Through meditation. But what what has it given you? How does it work? <laughs> if I knew what, how it worked, but I, but it, why does meditation make you? I think calm? I think I think the thing with meditation it allows. I mean, there are different forms of meditation. Uh, the one that I followed was where you actually clear the mind. So the mind, we're constantly being bombarded by all these thoughts. And I think it's in the thousands of thoughts we get, which are useless thoughts during the day. And these thoughts take us to past events, to the future. And we're always being stressed by whatever happens. So if we have an event, something happened, I drove to work, guy was in front of me, I couldn't get past him, I'm really stressed. Some people, that stay with them all day. Um, so meditation, and for me, meditation, it, 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 was, it enabled me to let those things go. You know, if that guy's got a bad day, that's not my problem. Um, I just let these things wash over me. Um, and the meditation, I think what happens is... I think someone said to me once about... I said, I said how does meditation work? And I know we've got all the science now and they can scan brains. But it's kind of like a light switch. I know that if I press a switch, the lights will come on. But don't ask me how that works. But I know it works. And with the meditation, what I found was that 
I practiced really hard at this meditation. Um, and we can go on to... if you, Well, let's stage, go on to what meditation is, because there's all medit- these various what, mindfulness things. What, yeah. what actually is it? Medi- well, I think, you see, that, that meditation is in, in, it's kind of quite... There's the stages of meditation. If you use meditation, I guess, on a mindfulness level, which is the ability to bring yourself into the present, um, to focus on the present... I always, what I found with uh, meditation was when I started off, I, I just was able to clear my mind with it and everything seemed a lot nicer. I was, the thoughts weren't going, I could control the thoughts, I can control my mind. It enables you to control your emotions, it enables you to, because everything's mind. So, you know, if you get your mind in the right place, everything's great. And really, meditation is about getting your mind in a peaceful space so that you're not finding the things in life stressful. But what I found from that, my personal experience was that that moves me on to the more spiritual side of meditation and we're not talking religious we're talking spiritual um where you know we're all beings all we want in life is peace love and happiness that's all we want and you can achieve that um and also with meditation it enables you to focus on the day's work um it quietens the mind and if you can quiet your, if you can quiet your mind so you're not being stressed by the thoughts that are coming into your mind constantly you see things differently. It's it's hard. It's, it's hard, but it's it's only as hard as you want it to be. Um, and for me, the meditation was, you know, sit down somewhere comfortably um, where you're not going to be distracted, turn the phone off, turn the telly off, and just body scan and just get your mind focused onto absolutely nothing. And they always, I think I read somewhere that, you know, the, one of the best forms of meditation was rock climbing or being shot at if you're in the army because your mind's being focused. You're, you're concentrating on that one thing. And that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get rid of this tens of thousands of thoughts we have so you can become mindful of where you are and what you're doing. And, and I think the guys with the mindfulness have taken it on a bit further where you're mindful eating, mindful walking, mindful this, mindful that. But it all boils down to the same thing. It's making yourself present in the time. So we're not worried about what happened yesterday, what happened four years ago, five years ago. Because every time we relive that experience four or five years ago, we're having the same stress hormone sent through our body. And we don't want that. Um, and we don't get focused too much on the future. Yeah, the future's important. We need to look ahead, but we don't get hung up on that. So example would be in, my, in, in work, we have certain targets for the next two, three, four years. We're not hung up on those targets. By being focused, we attack what we need to do to help us achieve those targets in six, 12, 18 months' time. So it becomes more aware, you become more focused on what you're actually doing that day, that moment. And that's why people like Google um, have regular morning meditations, to focus the mind, forget the rubbish that happened yesterday, just focus on what you're doing today and move your life forward. But I would say to anybody that's listening, if they can do the meditation, if they can meditate or want to learn a bit more about meditation, do it because it will revolutionise your life. Helen, you, are you a meditator? Yes, I, I was doing it a bit before I met John, but I, I think um, he mentioned something quite interesting about body scan. And it can be very difficult when you're, sit, when you're finally sitting on your own with nothing going on. It's very easy for thoughts that would have maybe not been noticed before to pop in and you do notice them and that can be very distracting so some people find counting to 10 forwards and backwards or counting their breath in and out to 10 it's about focusing on something other than your thoughts um if you get you know uh, recurrent thoughts it can be useful to notice what they are and then come back to them after like park them say i'll come back to that and then try and go back and concentrate on breathing but the body scan is quite interesting because you can you th- when John does his guided meditations um, in the sessions that he has been running uh, for many years now, you might start off with your feet. Think about your feet. How are your feet feeling? Are they relaxed? Are they tense? Can you relax them? How are your toes, your ankles, moving up to your calves, your knees, going all the way up to your body, being present, thinking about those parts of your body, noticing if anything is troubling you. And I guess, you know, it's not going to be easy at first and you, you just have to... No. You've got to forgive yourself. You've yeah. got to, it's just better to do something than, than nothing. And giving, even if it's ten minutes a day or five minutes a day, just sitting on a comfortable seat on your own with no distractions is actually something that's very rare in this day and age. Mm. The, and, art of, the art of doing nothing, really. And how often do you do it? Well, you know, I used to be regular. I used to be a, a 45-minute, twice-a-day type of guy. And what I find you... you, you I mean, there are obviously people that go away for meditation weeks two weeks and they just silence and what i found is there's a tolerance level 
and um, there's a point when I sort of find myself becoming stressed again or becoming anxious and I just go back and meditate. So you might be talking maybe, I don't know, three, four times a week. Um, and also uh, I find it a great problem solver as well. So if there's a problem that's been nagging at your mind um, and you just can't, just go and meditate. And then when you come away from that meditation, miraculously, there's an answer in front of you that really is, is the way you should have done it in the first place. So I think, the, I think it's just basically allowing the subconscious to, to, to work for you. Because the subconscious is blocked out constantly by the thoughts that we're continually having, we know the answers, you know, and I don't know, <coughs> yeah, everything's around us, I think Einstein said, did he not, that everything that has been will be and is, gonna, is all around us anyway. So the answers are all there. We've just got to allow that information to come into our minds. And, and do you have a special place where you go? Well, I used to. I used to have a, um, a special area, but now I think that with, with a certain amount of... I think to start with, you need an area. You need an area where you are telling yourself, this is my space, this is a space I'm going to meditate in. You need to tell your brain that you're going to meditate. There comes a point when you don't need that. Yeah, I could be sitting in a meeting and um yeah, sorry clients but people do tend to drone on a little bit and you can just sort of switch off a little bit you know you can just check so you can do it whenever you need to do it i don't recommend do it driving but um you can normally switch off but even then i say drive you know it's it's an awareness it's a quietness but it's an awareness of what's going on around you so that if you're switched off um you are still aware of your surroundings but the noises that come from the surroundings, they're not bothering you. You know, what someone else does in their daytime and that's irritating it isn't your worry. So you can switch off pretty much anywhere. So if somebody's listening to this and thinking, oh, come on, this sounds great. What, what would be your next, the next steps that you would recommend, given that you bought all these books and it didn't really do it for you? What would you say to them? I would genuinely say to them, go find a, um, a group um, like the Brahma Kumaris, like the Buddhist Centre in, in Cambridge. Go there, try it out, someone, and, and just be in that environment. Because what I also find is that group meditation is better than single meditation. There's a certain energy in a group. Um, so go along there, don't buy books, go along there, listen, and then don't just try one form of meditation. Try lots of forms of meditation, mantra meditation. There could be all sorts of, and just see what suits. And if you keep at it, and maybe we're talking, you know, I don't know, three, four, five months, keep at it. You'll find your own way. Uh, Lovely. Thank sorry. you, John and Helen. And the accountancypractice.com, yes. people can find there's out. There's information on there. Uh, there's information on there. Mm. And as I say, this is the first in a, a regular slot that you're, you're going to have. You're Looking coming back. Mm. Yes, me too. And you're coming back next month to... What are you yeah, talking about well, there, Helen? I'm going to sort of take over the next week's... Uh, next month, sorry. Um, I thought a theme of making time for me. Because I like that. <laughs> I think that's what a lot of us are missing. Um, we've got tools for greater efficiency in every area of our lives. And that makes, means that we end up doing more all the time. It's very hard to switch off. So I'd like to help people focus more. And um, rather than working hard, maybe working smart and improving the business lives and personal lives. And, and also, John just touched on this, uh, mentioning the importance of wasting time. Oh, yeah. Which just goes against the grain somewhat. Oh, so, that's great. I'm looking forward to that pottering. Yeah, and we were. I was really chuffed mm. that you, you did a song um, earlier. We had Cheryl Barnes's request, didn't we? Reach, yes. Uh, S and, Club um, 7, hello, Cheryl. Yeah, that was lovely. And there's a couple of people. Can I just mention, a, do a shout-out yes. to a couple of people? So thanks to everyone who messaged on the Accountancy Practice Facebook page. Um, loads of requests. We can't pay them all. But Lee has said she'll play them all in the rest of the show, which is fantastic. Um, I did want to make a, a special shout-out, though, to Terry Love, who said, shout-out for me, Tammy, Amelia and Eloise. He said, anything by Joe Rose, Joey Wren, or any of the amazing <laughs> folks talk records team. That's a bit biased, so we can't do that. Um, and he also that. suggested Love is in the air for us for our wedding but uh, oh. Cheryl Barnes um, had her track played already and um, Juliet's Mulholland's and Jacqueline McDonald's um, and Samantha Bradley's and Stevie Walker and Sharon Windybanks they're all coming up so thanks oh, ever so much well, lovely nice to have you on board as Thank listeners uh, I, yes I'll play the rest of the, the tracks throughout the rest of the show I'm on air till one I'll play uh, Money, money, money by ABBA after the traffic Great. and travel. But uh, congratulations again. Thank you Thank very you. much for all that information. Good luck. Thank you. For next Friday, next time I see you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yes, yeah, thank you very much, Thanks John and Helen. Thanks, Lee.